Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. And today I wanna to show you an even better way of how to load up Google Fonts. I actually discovered this technique from one of my comments from a previous video where I showed how to load Google Fonts from a different plugin. And in part, I found that plugin because I was using Adobe Fonts slash Typekit. But this is an even better way of using Google Fonts. So let's do that right now. All right, welcome back. As I said before, this was brought to my attention from a comment and I really appreciated this. I actually try to take the time to read and comment on all of my comments as much as possible. Thankfully, this channel's not too big. I hope it does grow bigger, but while it's still growing, I really appreciate all the comments. I do take them seriously. One thing I also got was from Gianpaolo Manfrini, and he said, hey, thanks for doing this job, but I have a question. Why didn't you use this plugin? And I honestly said that when I was looking for a Google plugin, I was looking for an Adobe Fonts plugin. And I happened to find the Google Fonts plugin. So I didn't even see this when I went on a hunt to load fonts in with Gatsby. And I said, well, this is even better because it prefetches Google Fonts. So I was like, let me check this out. And I even wrote to him and said, I want to make a video about this because to me, if I can find a better way of doing things, then I'm all in favor of this. So ADWC Nation, if you do or see something that can be better improved, leave me a comment because I do take these comments seriously and I want to make better videos so we can all become better designers through code. So let me close the channel comments. And once again, I'm focusing on the Gatsby plugin prefetch Google fonts. Whoo, that's a mouthful. The good thing is if you Google search this Google fonts plugin, you're gonna find it. And what this does is it actually just preloads the fonts into your website. Now keep in mind, the more time that you preload, the slower your site does show up However, you don't get that annoying difference or jump in fonts from a de facto Helvetica font to a custom Google font. So this does work in a good way, but just limit what you put in because time is of the essence and we are using Gatsby and Gatsby does make fast page speeds, but if you put too many fonts, you'll make Google or you'll make Gatsby have slow page speeds. So in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna load a font family up and I wanna put this inside of my Gatsby config. I have previously run this right here. So if we look at it, I just installed somewhere in here. Where did it go? So yes, I already ran the, I did, I did a yarn upgrade and I did run a yarn add Gatsby plugin previously to this video just so I can speed up a little bit of time and run that installation. It's actually above the yarn upgrade. <laughs> I thought I was prepared to show this to you and I ran a yarn upgrade and it is way, way at the top. Well, this is gonna be fun. Uh, it's somewhere, I can't even find it, it's way up there. But I did run a yarn ad previously in this design. Now, once again, you can be an NPM person or you can run with yarn. I've just found yarn to be more of my liking and so I've just stuck with the yarn ad in this configuration. So the next thing I have to do is I have to add this plugin inside of Gatsby config. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over, I'm up to 33, man, I made a lot of videos so far. And I'm gonna run the Gatsby config, open with. Someone also mentioned how you can create a folder in the Visual Studio code, and that is true. I just seem to bounce around from folder to folder, and so I'm just an old school guy that just basically control clicks, open with, and that's how I work. So. I have my Gatsby, I made my own template and you can watch a previous video of how I made this template. So I call it my starter template with React Bootstrap. And so I have to come over here and add, I'm just gonna copy and paste this. So if we take, we go from one down here, I'm gonna bring it in, I'll just put it right here just for ease of use. And I don't need the Oswald fault. Oswald font, there we go. So let's go find a font. And one of my favorite things to do in classwork or any kind of educational, edutainment, educational material is use display fonts because I never really get to use display fonts. Well, display fonts are cool. 
they don't have a lot of usages, except for when you wanna make sure you see something show up on a screen and make it painfully obvious that it's not the same font. So I get to use display font. This is my favorite thing to do in class time when I taught for years was I would purposely pick a bad font, not because I recommended using it, but because I got to see that it really changed. If I use a sans serif to a sans serif, at first glance, you're like, did it change? Did it not work or did it work? But if I add a font that's truly in display and let's grab, ooh, let's use Poiret one. So in Google, let's select the style. And I wanna do is I'm gonna use this one right here and making sure I got the right wordage. And it is this one right here. So I'll come back over to the Gatsby config and it's saying, saying open sans, take that out and making sure it is 400, it should be 400. So we'll just double check and take out 700. Usually display fonts are gonna be 400 by default. If you are new to the numerical values of fonts online, 400 is your normal book text weight font, 700 is generally your bold font unless a font does something different. Anything below 400 is like a thin or a lighter weight. Everything above 400 is generally considered a medium, a demi, a heavy, an ultra, a black font. It goes from 100 to 900. You essentially have nine weights of a font that you can use online. All right, so let me save this one. And of course we have to apply this font inside of our design. So in my little template that I already have set up to go, I do have a CSS file. Again, if you watch my previous video that talks about how I built my template, I have a custom CSS folder that's essentially empty. So let's just say H1, and what I have to do is double check and making sure, I always double check to make sure I got the right language in here. And so what it'll say is, hey, font family, there it is. Every so often it, they might have something different, so I'd like to double check to make sure I'm not making any mistakes as I apply the font into my design. Also display fonts will almost always be H1s, H2s. They're really not designed for paragraph or body copy. So H1, I'm gonna drop in the font family, save, and because I am running my Gatsby config, I don't have my Gatsby develop. So I'm gonna say Gatsby develop, and give it a few seconds to kick into gear. I move this, oh, I move this down. Oh, what'd I do? what did I forget? So I had to pause the video because I was like, why is this giving me all of these problems? And I realized I literally forgot a comma. I copied and pasted per the rules because I copied and pasted, but I forgot to close out this plugin properly and literally I forgot a comma to end this value so it doesn't roll into the next plugin. So literally a comma caught me at the very end and because the last one doesn't require it, now when I save it, if I run a Gatsby develop, it's always something small sometimes. I plan this out, I build everything and all of a sudden I forget one little piece. Welcome to Programming and Coding 101. You can do it 10, 12, 30 times. That's a random numbers. But you never know when you just might mess up on a semicolon, on a comma. And this is what coding is, is you're gonna make mistakes. And I wouldn't be amiss if I didn't tell you that I made the mistake and literally I took it out, I hit the record to bring it back in and I forgot to bring in the comma. So literally the change of a comma in this area was the one piece I did mess up on. So the preload, let's take a look and see how it looks. So if we run a local host, there it is. Hi people. Now of course your computer is not a very good reliable source to show it because it ran instantaneously because we don't have a web server which to run on. The local host is our local host. So just for fun, I'm gonna put a P tag in here and let's just make all the text show up and we'll save that. And there it is. Ooh, it does look pretty bad for display font. 
But anyways, it is showing up on the local host. So what I have is, I've got my sandbox somewhere. Here it is. So I've got a sandbox I use. Now keep in mind I am recording this in the future. So I guess in the past, the time is before. So do know that if you do go to this website that you might not see the same exact design that I'm working on, but you're welcome to take a look and see what my latest project is at sandbox.designerwhocodes.com. This isn't tied to a GitHub account. It's literally a manually deploying site that I use just to build things quickly for trial purposes only. And so I just drag and drop in these areas just to make it simple and to see if it works, to see if it actually works online. So now that I have the Gatsby develop all looking pretty good, let's run a Gatsby build. And this is where the magic comes into play. And now I'm really excited to actually use this on future projects. Because if it does work appropriately, you won't see the font shift or change before it loads the website up. Now, as a reminder, don't forget to not put, or I guess don't forget, but don't put too many fonts in because you will slow your site down. That's because it has to preload your fonts before it runs your site. Too many fonts will make your site slower and then defeat the purpose of running Gatsby. Awesome. So I've got a website. Public it is. Let's go drag it into Netlify. We update it. It's uploading and published. And we should see, oh, perfect. It loaded flawlessly. Uh, let me go run this over. Let's head over to Chrome and let's run sandbox dot a designer who codes. And perfect, it ran. So it preloaded my font, it ran my site and loaded it up. And so this plugin works really well. Again, I'm usually a Adobe Fonts fan just because I do pay for the Adobe Fonts, the Creative Cloud collection, but I'm also looking for a lot of fonts in Google as well. And so I will be using this in future projects. A huge shout out again, and if I can, I think I closed my comments, but to one of my uh, followers that did respond back and did comment this and say, hey, have you tried using this? And I said, no, I haven't, but now I have. So please and thank you for making all the comments on my videos, ADWC Nation. If you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have not tried this or if you have tried this plugin, let me know. Let me know what you think about this plugin if it works for you because it worked for me. And always, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. Thank you. I'm passionate about teaching designers how to become better web designers by learning how to code. And my first two courses are up on my website at courses.adesignerwhocodes. These two are all about Gatsby. If you're brand new and you've watched these Gatsby websites, you're thinking, I wanna learn how to use Gatsby. Well, this course is for you. How to set up, build, and deploy your first Gatsby website will take you from start to finish on building your first website. If you wanna take it a step further, then how to build a blog in Gatsby.js goes through the, not just the beginner, but more the intermediate usages of Gatsby. So if you are looking to better your web skills, I encourage you to take a look at these courses, sign up and become a better web designer by learning how to code in these first two courses about Gatsby.js. Once again, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes.